So we just watched a video from Dave Hun about monks being OP, and his argument is that monks are not OP. Uh, it was a very well done video, and I agree with a lot of the things he said, and the way he presented was very nice. Now we're going to go to what I predict to be a little bit more biased, because the title of this video is Monks are undisputably broken and this is why. While Dave Hun explained why they're not broken, Hera is going to now explain why they're broken. So, let's have a look. Hello everyone and welcome to another YouTube video. This Hello. is a proper YouTube video. And this is about why monks are overpowered at the moment and why they're seen in every single pro play. If you don't believe me, watch any TTL set and look how many monks you're going to see. There's like half of the maps though are clown maps in TTL. So you would naturally see a lot more monks on that format. Literally pick it at random. Any TTL set from Platinum League and you will see just how many monks you're going to find. Okay. Now why is why are monks broken? Nothing changed from monks. Why are they suddenly broken? This is what happened. There's a mo and I'm freestyling this. This is off the top of my head. This is how ingrained it is. And not there's no nothing written. <laughs> I'm looking at nothing right now. So the first thing that changed with monks is the fact that Arbalest and Crossbow were nerfed. They were nerfed a few patches ago before the meta was crossbows, and crossbows were the only unit that did well against monks. So we're going crossbows on Arabia. It was fantastic. Crossbows. You know, they don't let a monk, so then to counter crossbows, you saw skirms, you saw some skirm knights, you saw crossbow camel, and that was cool, right? And then crossbow got nerfed, rightfully so, we saw crossbows every game, so we nerfed crossbows, okay? Then everyone's like, yo, knights are really good now, because crossbows... I have to say, though, I don't think the only reason, or like one of the arguments here, like, is that, oh, crossbows got nerfed. I don't think that alone is enough to say that, oh yeah, monks got buffed because crossbows got nerfed. There might be a little bit of a combination there in some regards, but I think it's more of the development of playstyles, where it's a lot more walled. Like back in the day where crossbows, camels, crossbow knight, uh, skirms, knights, it was like there was a lot more activity on the map. People weren't playing as safe, walling up, town centers, economy focused, play safe, you know. There was a lot more, I would say, arguably risk taking in use of units, and therefore it made a lot more sense back in the day to make more units. When I say back in the day, that's also like a couple of years ago. Let's carry on. Nerfed. And then as soon as knights became really good, everyone was like, yo, you know what? Knights are good. Let me steal their knights. I'm going to go monks. This has also been a patrol pathing thing, right? Knights aren't bad now or were not good because of monks or crossbow being uh, nerfed. Pathing of knights was way better in the past. You had the patrol things where you could patrol right on top of enemy units. You can kind of still do it today. But also the patrol micro or attack move micro from crossbow was insane. So that was also a whole different thing that made crossbows OP. When you could attack move and like, cause you would get like a speed boost kind of while attack moving, that made knights completely useless. And then we're like, what the hell? I'm getting my knights converted. I can't do anything. I can't attack. I get converted in two seconds. I'm playing as Mr. Yo, the conversions are instant. I can't react to it. True. So what do I do? Let me go light calf. Light calf is the only unit mm -hmm. that can counter monks. Because if I go crossbow, it's too expensive now, so it's not very worth it, unless I have a crossbow sieve. And if I go for knights, it's the worst, I'm getting converted. Let me go light cap. Oh, and light cap are working. I get to kill the monks. This is actually great. If they go crossbow, I just go light cap, and maybe I have to add some siege, or light cap, and... Wait, hold on, I have an idea. I'm gonna go monks myself, of course. I'm gonna go light cap to kill their monks, to raid them, to control the map, to kill the crossbow, and then, when my light cap is getting weak, it's getting low HP because the crossbows are hitting them or the knights are hitting them, I send them back and I heal them with my with my monks. What Hera is describing right now is a playstyle that used effectively, I think only like 10 or 15 people in the game can do. It's an extremely hard way to play without dying. The, the style, the playstyle he's describing right now is an extreme, extremely high level of execution. So that's where definitely like, yeah, the top, top guys can pull this off and not die. If a lesser player tries that, there's a big chance he just dies. The reason it, it works so well at the absolute top guys is people are so good at defending and people are so good at getting out of really fast castellage time with very uh, low, uh, like very good economy efficiency and minimal losses and defending with the absolute minimum. That's why also the castellage time get pushed which means that there's less time to do damage. There's less of a time window where you can take advantage of a feudalage army. Like also, this goes back to the Day of Hun video. He also talks about this. 
But that's also why, like, to have a unit that you can make in Feudal Age transition into Castal Age, aka Scouts, into Light Cav, that can be a counter to the Monks. And also a Light Cav, especially if you mix in a Mangan or a Scorpion, like he mentions here, they can also deal with crossbows, for example. So I think this is a very hard, like, that's the, that's the issue as well here that we are talking about. We're talking about, like, okay, how is it playing out on amongst the top 20, top 30, top 40 guys? Monks are super effective. How are, is it playing out rank 5,000 to 25,000? How good are monks there? It's probably a whole different world, right? So it it's, yeah, let's just, just continue. So I can raid, I can control the relics, I can kill their monks, I can trade effectively against their crossbows, and I can convert their knights, I can convert their pikes, I can convert their siege pushes, I can convert their buildings if I get redemption. This is how we found ourselves in this monk meta. People realized how strong monks are against everything, and then how good light cav are against monks. And then they combine the two, light cav and monk together, and nothing beats that at the moment. This came to me. What about redemption allowing you to convert siege units, but then after you do redemption, there's another tech that you have to do to convert buildings. Like I'm starting to think like instead of having techs that have multi-purpose for monks, maybe having separate techs. Like redemption, okay, you can convert siege units, but why should redemption also allow you to convert buildings? Maybe there needs to be a different tech for that as well. Just random thought. Look at any any pro game, migration in TTL, watch any migration game, monks and like have in the center in pro, in pro play. Watch any fractal game, monks fast stimp, or monks castle rush with redemption. Yeah, but that's just a map that really, really pushes that meta. It's just a map. Now let's take a look at something in game here. This has always been the case, but consider how strong monks are. And now let's take a look at the technology tree. We're going to take a look at any civilization. Let's just go a Aztecs, just randomly. Yeah, just a random bad monks of average monks of. So the monks, let's go through the, 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 so every monk has 100 gold. And knights, if you guys aren't aware, 60 food, 75 gold. So it's 135 resources for 100. If a monk converts a unit, not only does the unit die, it switches sides. So that guy lost 135 resources. We can laugh at him. Ha ha, you got converted. And the guy who converted him got 135 resources. So this 100 gold got us a resource swing of 270 with one conversion. One conversion is a, is a resource swing of 270. And the best part is the monk might not even die for that. The monk not, doesn't die. If the monk dies, that's 270 swing minus 100. We, we're up 170 resources because we got a conversion. We traded one conversion for one monk. And that is the best case scenario for the guy with the knights. The worst case scenario is you get converted minus 270 uh, resource swing and you don't get the, you don't get the monk. Why? Because you can garrison in the town center, for example. Not only that, the monk can pick up relics, one of the best win conditions in late game. It can also heal your knights so that 135 resource units can be on one HP, almost dead. Monk heals them back to full. That's plus 135. Everything he's describing in the last minute is best case scenario for the monk player. It can also go the other way. Same for light cap. 80, you know, 80 food units, you heal them back to full, you basically get 80 food. So the monk converts, very, very broken mechanic, picks up relic, insane for late game win condition, healing, amazing value. And to make matters worse, look at how cheap the monk upgrades are. Redemption, 475 gold. Let's say Not we get redemption cheap. and we convert a mangano. 160 wood and 135 gold for a mangano. Isn't it 165 wood? That's 295 resources. 25 resources times two, because it's a swing. 590. We get redemption for 475. If you convert one mangano, it's a resource swing of 590. It, we profit. Just by one monk and one redemption, that's 575 resources. We profit if you convert one mangano. What in a practical game? Watch watch pro Stonks. games with redemption. They convert one, two mangonels. They convert four or five houses. They convert two stables, two ranges. They convert everything with this tech. One thing to point out here is, if you're in a situation where you're trying to convert mangonels, usually it's from a defensive position. It can be offensively as well, but it can, it's usually from a defensive position. You're being pushed by mangonels, therefore you're trying to do redemption as the counter. This means that you're already on the back foot. You, your economy might not be set up for it. You might have to use the market to sell a lot of resources in order to afford redemption because you didn't plan on doing redemption initially. There's like a, maybe you didn't even have monks, maybe you rushed up two monasteries. Like it, you might have also had to make a lot of sacrifices to get to this point where you can now convert his mangonel. So there, there's always a lot of context missing from how the game played out that forces into this position. But he's not wrong. 
as I talked about the power swing, the resource swing is pretty much the same. When you convert a unit, it's massive. And again, that those are the swings that can start the snowball. And it's so cheap. Atonement, 325 to convert enemy monks. Again, best counter to monks. He says it's cheap based on the value it can get. It's not cheap. Those are expensive upgrades. Monks is monks, because this is a pretty cheap upgrade. Even herbal medicine, 200. But this is not relevant to this video. Very cheap, and you get a lot of value from healing. Heresy, the anti-monk tech, 1,000 gold. I think heresy is a, is a tech that should be available to every civilization. And I think heresy should be slightly cheaper. Faith, the anti-monk tech, 1,000 gold, 750 food. Look how expensive they are. Now, the best part is Imperial Age. Illumination, 120 gold. Yeah, that's uh, extremely an Imperial cheap. Imperial Age tech. Extremely Walk printing, cheap. Plus three range the monks. Uh, also extremely gold. cheap. Look what you pay for one extra extra range on a bomber counter or siege units. You pay 1,100 resources, 500 food, 600 wood, or vice versa. But you pay 1,100 resources for plus one range. Of course, you also get a little bit extra damage to buildings and such. But the difference between plus one range on bomber cannons versus plus three range on monks that is used to counter the bomber cannon, it's 900 resources. So there is a big argument that the Imperial texts are definitely very cheap. And then you have Faith that is just ridiculously overpriced again. To, to put it in context, a Bracer plus one range to Arbalest or to, to, to castles and skirms. 300 food, 200 gold, 500. That's different though. Arbalest you're usually going to make maybe 100 of in a game. Monks you make, depending on what you're playing, 12, 15 monks throughout the game. Maybe 20 at most. So... An upgrade that in fact impacts so many units should also be a little bit more expensive. Resources. This is 200 gold. Theocracy. 200 gold. Anyone can use monks in, in, in imp with, with theocracy. Fervor, theocracy, I think, gold. is fine. Sanctity. This got nerfed recently. It's now 175. It used to be 120. Illumination, 120. This is yeah. insane. Also, the, the cost of other upgrades that are more expensive are usually including some food cost, wood cost, which is a more accessible resource. The monk is 100% gold the most valuable resource in the game. It also has to be taken into account. Bracer? Look at this. You guys don't believe me. Look at this. Bracer. 300 food, 200 gold. Gold cost is the same. 500 resources. I can get illumination, block printing, and theocracy for 520. On one hand, I'm dealing with 2023 inflation. And the other hand, it's a dollar store. The monks are a dollar store. <laughs> it, it, it's incredible, exaggerated. guys. Exaggerated. We, we don't need a small nerf to monks. We need a massive Nerf to monks, like a massive nerf to monks. Hera, oh, monks are broken. Just learn how to use them. Watch my tournaments. I win every tournament with monks. Every single time I win a game in a tournament, I'm using monks myself, basically. It's literally, in KOTD, I didn't win with monks. What did I win with? I won with Lycav. So it's not like I can't deal with monks. Is that I'm sick of using them myself. It's either I lose to monks or I'm winning with monks. All of my success these days is around monks. I'm doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. Everyone is sick of it. The, the viewers are getting sick of it. I have viewers in my stream. They've been watching for a couple months and they're sick of it. I've been playing for 10 years. The, this monk meta has been the last like six to eight months. People figured out how good monks are. And it's Can't wait for play. Viper to watch. Banana, I'm here. But that's also where I'm like, well, if you hate monks and you really don't want to play monks or play against monks, you don't have to play them. Unless you want to win at all costs, right? I mean, in tournaments, obviously, it's a bit different. But if you're playing ladder games, like 90, 95% of Hera's stream is still ladder games, right? He could just not play monks. Try and find a way to play around it, play against it. Do different strategies that isn't meta in order to circumvent the whole monk phase, right? There are, there are options there, but obviously, I, see, I still understand where it's coming from. It's not fun. I'm, I'm playing practice games at night. It's not fun. The game is completely random because it's like whoever gets the most conversions in the mid game, and nothing's nothing's changing with the monks. We got a we got a fifty five gold increase on sanctity. That's the only thing. And now the best part of the video is going to answer all your questions. Why okay. aren't we seeing this in lower level? Simply put, monks are hard to use. It's hard to convert three units with three monks very fast. True. It's hard to manage your monks and make sure you're always watching them so they don't die for free. But what happens when the pro players, and not only the pros, everyone in the top 50 has gotten so good that they can always be good with monks? What, what do we do then? The only option is to nerf it because now everyone has, been so, has become so good at monks and no one is going to be you know, losing monks for free. It's not going to happen. So all we're going to see in tournaments is monk, light calf, light calf, monk until it gets changed. 
This is the, the story of how monks became meta. The crossbow nerf played a huge role in that. And I hope you guys can see just how it came to be. And it's not a bad thing. Let's nerf monks and the meta will stabilize again. Like we nerfed crossbows, it stabilized. Let's nerf monks and it'll stabilize into something else. We don't nerf them to the ground. They're not going to be useless. Let's nerf them enough so other units can compete. Skirms and castles should not die to monks. The last thing I'll mention and the reason why it's the most frustrating thing about monks is that players... Again, I have to come back to the the map sometimes force the meta, aka Fractal, aka Socatra. It forces the meta in some regards. Like Dave Hunt pointed out, short rush distance, monks are very good. It's also player playstyles that force monks. If you look among the top 15, 20 players, how many of those players are high risk takers in their approach to the game? Very, very few. We used to have like players like Vivi who would go like for like tower rush every game and things like that. Those things always like snowball the game into like different directions than monks. But now if you look at the top player pool, every single player plays 90% plus of tournament games following the meta. The meta is somewhat passive on most like it depends on the maps, of course, but the meta is somewhat somewhat passive. You play safe, you wall up. You minimize the risk, you minimize the damage you take, you try to do some counterattacks, try to put on some pressure maybe. Maybe you'll do a defensive tower on your gold if it's exposed. And then you transition to Castle H with more often than not a, an aim for a good timing. And when you try to go to Castle H so fast, you're not going to hit Castle H with more than 7, 8, 9 units. And that's like, okay, these 7, 8, 9 units are there to trade efficiently while I set up economy at home. There, this also encourages the light cab monk meta. It's also highly our fault as players for wanting to take less risk in our playstyles because we want to play safe. We want to get our economies. We want to try and win a little, little bit later than when we were way more active and way more offensive and way more aggressive. And just the, the maps and matchups were way more dynamic back even like three, four years ago. So it's also the meta develop, developing by us players have led to this. You could argue as well that we are playing like this because of the monks and all that stuff, but I don't think that's the case. I think whether the monks were like this or not, we would have still played like this, full walls, set up economy, set up TCs. We would have just defended with army instead of monks. It is our fault as well. If, if every player, if ten, 10 out of the 20 top players were risk takers, instead of like one out of top 20, you would be see so many more tournament games where crazy things would happen and weird strategies would happen and forward aggressive plays, forward castle drops, this and that. And monks would be more less prevalent in my opinion in that case. Their tower, video. I'm making a video, one sec. <laughs> They're making a, a, a town center. Uh, they, have, they got monks near the town center, near their tower, near their castle, they'll convert. If they get the conversion, great. Then they hop into the TC. If they don't get the conversion, the other guy has a knight cav or a knight jumping on the monk. If they don't get it, last second, they'll hop into the TC. So now you're under his TC with knights. You, you, don't, you don't kill the monk. You never kill. And then he can hop out the other side and start converting you again. You chase him, he hops back in. Until they get an instant conversion. If they get an instant conversion, you lose your knight. That's it. You, you never kill the monk. The monk always hides in TC. What is this promote? Defensive play. You can't dive TCs, you can't raid anymore with knights, they get converted, so you just don't raid at all, unless you have light cap. That's gonna be it for this video, massive monk rant, but please, end of discussion guys, it's not even up for debate in pro play, look at the stats, look at the games, monks are dominating, it's time for a big nerf, let's make the game fun again, we love this game and we wanna see it thrive, let's do that together. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you guys in the next video, where hopefully monks will be nerfed. And then, they showed us the fortified church. Uh, we have Tata in chat that is saying, I think there's an issue with the new saves as well. Every new save has like super monk text. That is kind of true, right? But who is the main lead of Forgotten Empires balancing and creation of saves? It's Sujin, a an arena lover. I'm not surprised that we have monks for every new civilization. Why would I go siege push when you already have monks? If I invest 200 wood in the siege workshop and 230 research into Mangano, and you research redemption. Exactly. That's where it's also like timing wise, right? If you want to go monk pressure, you have uh, mangal pressure. Usually you see that happen right away in the castle age. That's the timing you have to do damage, right? But most or a lot of civs these days do have redemption. So yeah, obviously I think Hera's take is <laughs> heavily biased. 
against monks. He's obviously not a fan of them. But I also think he makes a lot of good points, though, as to why monks can appear so strong and so OP. What do I think in the end? We have now watched one video explaining why monks are not OP, and one video explaining why monks are OP. I think both are right. I think it depends on the map. I think it depends on the sieves. And I also think it depends on the level of the game. I personally would not be opposed to making some of the Imperial Age techs in the monastery more expensive on gold. I would also like to see every civilization in the game get heresy. I, I understand that it might not make sense, but I also think heresy is a positive tech for the game potentially, just so you have an option to counter monks if the monks noble is happening. It has to be obviously costly. A thousand gold is a lot. I think maybe you could change that to like 600 gold, 400 food or something like that. Just to make it a little bit more accessible. It's still it's still a thousand resources in the castle age for heresy. It's it would still be very expensive. I would also be open to certain things like let's say redemption costs four hundred gold and only uh, allows you to convert siege. And then what could happen after redemption is you unlock a new tech that is like one hundred and fifty or two hundred gold that also allows you to convert buildings, for example. So you don't get the double trouble kind of thing. Uh, also, like block printing is two hundred gold. I could easily see that be three, four, five hundred gold, maybe even let's say four hundred gold, double the cost. And I also wouldn't be opposed to monks upon spawn having zero faith, but there's like a cheap fifty gold tech that you can do where they spawn with a hundred faith. I would also not be opposed to see monks have seven range by default, and there's a tech that costs a hundred gold that gives them nine range. You know, I think th small things like that could be a way to make the nerf if needed by monks. Like I, I don't think. If you implement one or two of those changes, I don't think that would make monks bad suddenly. And I, I don't, I'm not saying you should do all of this as one at once. I'm saying maybe trickle in one change at a time, like they did now with Sanctity being 175 gold. It's all a step towards making it maybe a bit, bit more enjoyable. But I will, no matter what, always go back to the fact that monks are extremely RNG-based. And the fact that monks can either convert you in 5 seconds or I think 13 or whatever the range is, that's always going to be the main core of the frustration. But that's also the main point of discussion in my opinion. Should monk RNG be a thing? We've had monk RNG now for 20 plus years. Is it too late to change that they have like a fixed conversion timer? Or maybe we should minimize the RNG range even more? I don't know. I personally think monks are frustrating to play against, frustrating to play with, but I also have so many games where the monks just, by human error, the monks, obviously like monks is the best unit in the game if you were an AI and you could micro every monk perfect. But human error also makes monks not OP. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and make sure to check out the videos we just watched as well below. Thanks for watching.